Hey guys, Anders here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm updating my best setups for every single weapon in the entire game video. Uh, my last video that I did this was months ago, and since then, there's obviously been a bunch of new weapons added and actually some attachment preference changes uh, that I find to be better than the ones that I suggested in the previous video. So yeah, we're just going to go over every single weapon, going to go over some basic things and why I think uh, the attachments I pick are the best setups for the weapons. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications because I do plan on streaming on YouTube very, very soon here. I'm, I'm going to announce it, I think, in a couple days when I think I'm going to stream on YouTube. So turn on notifications. You're not going to want to miss that. The initial inaugural YouTube stream. So first things first, we're going to start out with the sidearms. Uh, the Glock, nothing's really changed here. In my opinion, the best setup is a tactical compensator, laser sight, and drum magazine. Obviously, sights are personal preference. And as a general rule for weapons, you're going to want to fill out uh, most of these categories just so you have options available. Now, moving on to the MP28. I don't really use this gun, but I know the best setup because I, I have friends that tell me it, and uh, I can already see what it's going to be without even using it. Uh, tactical compensator... Laser sights and the drum magazine. Again, sights are personal preference. Magnum, you don't really have much choice here. So yeah, just like sight of your choice and make sure you unlock both ammo types and equip both of them. PF51, best setup here is again going to be tactical compensator laser sight and just make sure you equip both ammo types so you have that change on the fly. And finally, the M1911, you don't really have much choice here. Uh, I don't think the suppressor is worth it on this, but if you want to run it for the cool factor, I don't really think it would hurt you that much. Uh, but I do think the optimal setup would be factory barrel, tactical light. Uh, yeah, you don't really have much choice there. So as far as the SMGs go, the PBX, PBX is a little better than most people remember it because they did buff it a couple times, I think. Uh, I find this weapon to be very, very effective with the tactical compensator, laser sight, uh, standard issue extended, close combat, and high power rounds. Uh, that will give you a good all-rounder. The PP-29 used to be the only weapon that was actually usable because you really couldn't hit anything uh, at the beginning of the game with any other weapon than the PP Bison, which made everyone thought it was overpowered when it really wasn't, but that's beside the point. Tactical Compensator, High Power, Standard Issue, and Subsonic are the ammo types you want to run with this thing. No underbarrel attachments because they are not available for this weapon. The MP-9, again, you can see a theme here with, FM, with, with SMGs. It's not really a big deal for having a grip. Uh, you just want to kind of maximize its hip fire. Uh, it's already pretty accurate in ADS. So tactical compensator, laser sight, and drum magazine with close combat extended and close combat rounds. For the K30, uh, again, tactical compensator, laser sight, drum mag, pretty straightforward. I also keep a wrap suppressor, and there's something interesting to note about this specific weapon. Uh, this skin called the Stinger does give you a unique red dot sight. Uh, for the fusion hollow as you can see there you can kind of see it right in the right side of the screen My cat you can't see but my cat is actually looking at my screen while I'm recording this <laughs> And uh, of course the p90 here just added in season 2 I actually the update 2.1 I made a full breakdown of the patch notes I'll link that in the description if you want to watch that you don't know what was added or changed uh, I run flash suppressor and laser sight on this again I don't really think suppressors in this game are worth it considering you're on the mini map Pretty much 24-7 because of Casper and, and sensor grenades and all that stuff. Moving on to the assault rifles. Now, this is where some of the changes and attachments come into play. Um, I think that the best way to run the M5 is definitely short barrel uh, and LWG grip. I'll go into explanation after I cover the whole attachments. So, um, yeah, short barrel, LWG grip, standard issue extended, close combat, and high power. The reason I choose LWG grip over the BCG grip now is you can actually see that the LWG grip... While its attributes are different, you know, higher accuracy while moving, lower accuracy while static, I find that the higher accuracy, even higher than the BCG grips bonus from the LWG grip while moving, is actually very noticeable in game. So I use this because I don't find myself standing still in this game very much. And I think if you actually paid attention uh, while you play, you would also find that you're, you rarely stand still in this game if you're playing optimally. So I find the LWG grip uh, and its tangible increase in accuracy over the BCG grip makes it worth it. Plus, you don't have the downside of uh, worse hip fire. Uh, again, you just want to make sure you fill out your bottom slots here with the 40 millimeter grenade launcher. And I like to run the master key. You can choose smoke or whatever you want, even laser sight if you want. Uh, but yeah, that's how I run the M5. As far as the AK, again, LWG grip, tactical compensator, drum mag, standards extended, and high power extended. 
Uh, again, same reason I pick a, pick the LWG over the BCG in this situation. Higher accuracy bonus, no decrease to hip fire accuracy. And again, fill out your uh, bottom slots here with grenade launchers. Uh, the scar. Again, tactical compensator. Um, the scar does not have a available grip slot. It only has grenade launchers. And uh, I run the high power drum. Standard issue extended. Excuse me, standard issue is actually pretty fun to use with this weapon. It's just a higher RPM scar, but I do think. Um, the high power rounds still vastly out time to kill it. The H42 is a very interesting weapon. This is one of the weapons where I do feel like it might be worth to run a suppressor because I don't find this weapon needs to be that much more accurate. And uh, actually, I'm going to just make a on-the-fly on adjustment here because I haven't used this weapon in a while. Um, wrap suppressor and LWG grip. You can even run laser sight or maybe even a grenade launcher as made on this weapon. There is a ton of ways to run this weapon. Uh, as I stated in previous videos, but my favorite ways are definitely wrap suppressor, LWG grip, and I switch out for the grenade launcher. You're going to want to run standard issue extended, standard issue, and high power. Uh, alternatively, you can equip high power and use this weapon in single shot, which is kind of like weird, but it does actually uh, become quite effective. The AM40. Uh, this weapon was recently fixed, so it doesn't have SMG headshot multiplier, so you should be doing the correct amount of damage with this weapon now. So the way I like to run this weapon is, again, it, I kind of use it like an SMG. So tactical compensator, laser sight, and uh, high power extended, standard issue extended, and high power. Um, I actually might say that the standard issue extended is better than the high power extended, um, but I really don't use this weapon much, and I honestly don't think it matters. So this is I would say this is just personal preference. Uh, standard issue is going to get you higher fire rate. High power is going to get you a little more damage, but lower fire rate and a little worse recoil. Finally, the M16. The M16 is a little strange because this weapon actually has quite a bit of optimal ways to use it. Uh, if you're struggling with recoil, I would run flash suppressor and foregrip. If you're not struggling with recoil, I would use heavy barrel laser sight. Uh, again, this weapon has the LVG as well, which is uh, a unique grenade launcher, I believe, within the base game. And it functions a little differently than the HE because it bounces and it's uh, incredibly strong. So definitely make sure you have that equipped on it. Moving on to the LMGs. Uh, the LMG category in this game is uh, very, very effective. Let me just make another on the fly change. I haven't used this weapon that much because uh, I've been using the advances, which we'll be getting into. Again, short barrel LWG grip and standard issue extended. Standard issue extended has a faster time to kill than high power and close combat rounds actually. So yeah, definitely use that. PKP, uh, the real reason, the, the real way to run this weapon is to actually never use it. You should just use the advances. <laughs> but um, I like running the Arcom Tactical Muzzle Break because recoil on this weapon is trash. You can try to use Tactical Compensator, but I don't know, dude. This weapon's just really not that good. Try to use the Arcom and High Power Extended, and uh, uh, hey, I wish you the best, you know? Now, Undisputed King of the LMG category, which is actually getting nerfed in the next patch, is the advances right now. Tactical Compensator, Laser Sight, Standard Issue Extended, uh, 200 rounds, insanely accurate, no downsides, you never have to reload, it's it's insane. That's definitely the best way to run this weapon. You can swap out for a suppressor, and honestly, hey, if that's what you like, that's what you like. It's not going to really hinder accuracy that much, but you might notice it at range. Moving on to another Battlefield 3 weapon that they added, the M60. Uh, run Flash Suppressor and Laser Sights. I wouldn't run Bipod in this game at all because of just how strong snipers are and, you know, you never really want to prone. Um, this weapon does not have that much recoil, but if you're struggling, use Foregrip and Flash Suppressor and you should be good to go. And as a general rule of thumb, you're going to want to use the Extended Mag over the Default Mag just because it's a free increase in ammo count. So, yeah. Um, uh, a quick side note for, I think, PC players only. Uh, if you're running super low settings... The reflex sight on this gun has a terrible glow, so I would just stick to the Cobra sight. Moving on to the Marksman Rifles, uh, the DM7. Just make another on-the-fly adjustment here. Uh, I would run Tactical Compensator and LWG Grip. You could also get away with running Tactical Compensator and a Grenade Launcher here. I think that would also be completely fine, and the accuracy uh, would be just totally usable. Um, I, I like using the Ghost Hybrid on this because it's just a nice, uh, nice switch between 1.5 and 4x. And I use standard issue, high power, and close combat. Don't sleep on close combat on this gun. It's actually pretty decent. Oh, the SVK. As if the ZH-29 in Battlefield 5 wasn't annoying enough, they decided to add a ZH-29 in this game with a faster fire rate and 
more ammo in a magazine. Um, I like running this weapon with short barrel and, uh, again, LWG grip. But, again, you can get away with running it in grenade launcher. I like using standard issue extended, high power, and standard issue. Uh, standard issue extended just gives you a lot of versatility with this weapon. It gives you a ton of... Especially the best of both worlds. I think the high power rounds, it's just a little... Like, the capacity is not that great to warrant use it, using it. Ah, uh, yes, the V-car. The V-car is, in my opinion, actually pretty underrated. Um, I think short barrel and tactical compensator can be run on this weapon optimally. Uh, it's just, it's range dependent. So if you're if you're pushing up on people, you can switch to short barrel. If you're shooting people at like mid-range, use tac comp because you will see and feel the accuracy increase. Uh, use LWG grip. Again, if you're pushing in close quarters, you want to use short barrel laser sight. I would say more mid-range, you want to use tactical compensator, LWG grip. And you want to use Close Combat Drum, Close Combat Extended, and Standard Issue. The BSVM. This is one of the weapons that benefits the most from the LWG grip. You can really, really feel the accuracy increase while moving with this grip. Uh, so I would absolutely recommend using that. Uh, use Short Barrel for the fastest possible TTK. And of course, High Power Extended. Uh, you can also use this weapon like an SMG. So if you want to use it like that, I would maybe run laser sight with it, you know, a short barrel, laser sight, and then close combat, um, and then short barrel, LWG, and high power for that mid-long combat. Uh, it's still one of the most overpowered weapons in the entire game. The nerf really didn't do anything. <laughs> as far as the SWS, I have a couple very interesting things that I found out from a friend of mine, actually. So I'm going to give you two optimal settings for this weapon. If you're sniping long range, just use long barrel, laser sight, and standard issue extended. But if you're a crazy man and you want to rush in and get those one-shot body shots, something really weird about this weapon is the RPM of the SWS is actually increased more by using the wrap suppressor than using the short barrel. And you, if you combine that with close combat ammo, you have a extremely fast firing bolt action that one shots people in the chest in close quarters. So I would run wrap suppressor, laser sight, and close combat if you're running in with this thing, and a long barrel, laser sight, and standard issue extended if you're uh, using it like a normal sniper. And of course, you want to have your grenade launchers equipped as well. Now, moving on to the DXR, uh, not as much versatility as the SWS, unfortunately. I would just run long barrel and standard issue extended. Uh, and keep high power around as well, just because it does a ton of damage if you hit a body shot. Speaking of a ton of damage if you hit a body shot, the NTW-50. Fairly straightforward, really not much to talk about here. Uh, keep your anti-material on your first slot and your anti-material or high power for vehicles in your second slot. One shot to the chest, very annoying weapon. And again, another new addition to the game with the Gaul Sniper Magnum, or at least the base game. Uh, again, not much customization here. In fact, I would say there's almost no customization, so... Just pick the site you want, and yeah, that's really it. Don't have much to talk about there. Moving on to the shotgun classes, the MCS-880. Now, I believe as of recording this video, the double-aught buckshot is still bugged and does not one-shot to the head or the body. So I wouldn't use the double-aught buckshot unless that got secretly fixed, but I did not see that in the patch notes. So I would run number four buckshot, keep number one around, and use flechette shells, or you can use slugs, just whatever you want. Use your factory barrel and, of course, the laser sight. As far as the 4570 government, you're going to want to keep the tactical compensator, the uh, laser sight, which I don't have, and the high power slash standard issue slash armor piercing. Now, the 12M. I don't know how this weapon has escaped nerf for so long, but here we are. Run short barrel, laser sight, and buckshot uh, shell drum, slug shell, and uh, buckshot shell extended. Something interesting to note about this weapon with the slugs, it one-shots in the head across the map. It is extremely strong. It is extremely annoying. So you can actually turn this weapon into a bit of a full-auto shotgun sniper if you want. And last but certainly not least, the crossbow, everyone's favorite meme weapon. You're going to want to run the laser sights. Uh, you're going to want to run the factory barrel, which you, of course, don't have any other attachments. And uh, you're going to want to run the standard bolts most of the time and the explosive bolts you can kind of mess around with the bolt rack a little bit but i i don't find it to to be as effective i picked one up off the ground with the bolt rack before um and it, i would say standard issue is definitely still more effective than that Throw on standard issue and uh explosive bolt 
that is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and like the video. Comment down below if any of this was helpful. And, of course, turn notifications on because, hey, I'm going to stream on YouTube pretty soon. And I hope to see a lot of you new guys there. So, I'll see you guys hopefully in the stream. And I'll see you guys in the next one.